Okay, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us tonight. Thank you for this gift of eternal life. We are discovering it. We are discovering little by little. Help us to, like Mary, to, to really um, be a, a, a light in, in the world, to, to listen to your, your words and put them into practice as she did. Uh, so we can ask the help of, of, our, of our mother, Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, very good. So... So this week we started another, we can say, chapter of this theme of eternal life. It's about how we can, uh, I mean, yeah, you can come forward. Here we are, very few, yeah. So. So the, we can talk about how we can keep and, and develop this gift because the gift of eternal life is not like a, an object we put in the house and we keep it there and it will remain anyway. Uh, it's something alive. It's like a, like a seed that needs to be, to be cultivated, to be, to be looked after, to be uh, watered. I don't know much about country. I'm not a country boy, but uh yeah, we i know that with eternal life we have to do uh, something like that to put all the tools so that this seed may may grow but we are only i think we don't really need yeah? ah okay all right yeah all right so that's the what i, I wanted to yeah like an, an introduction especially if we want to, to go deeper and deeper in, in this gift of eternal life, if we want to start it here and now, as we repeated many times, we need especially to put the, the tool of prayer and the sacraments. So again, I don't know much about, uh, about uh, gardening or, or things like that, but I know that we need to put, yeah, put some efforts. So the main efforts we can put in order to develop, to make our eternal life grow is really uh, our prayer together with the, with the sacraments. So the main passage we are going to pray with tonight is from Luke 6, verses 43 to 49. Luke 6, verses 43 to 49. I will read it bit by bit. So the, the first two verses, 43, 44, are already quite challenging. Jesus says, there is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten, fruit, a rotten, rotten tree that produces sound fruit. Every tree can, can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. So again, keeping the comparison of, of the country, uh, yeah, a tree or a plant, for example, can be affected by different diseases, as far as you know, or insects or whatever, parasites. Or, and so these days there are many chemical uh, yeah, things you can put. You can use natural methods, I don't, I don't know much about it, but the thing is that there are many dangers 
and the same in our spiritual life. So in this sense, we don't have to be naive. And also a plant or a tree needs uh, an appropriate climate and needs uh, water, not too much water as we, we've seen recently. So in, in our spiritual life, it's something, something similar. We need this constant care so that the tree or the plant or the flower or whatever may grow properly and, and in, a, in a beautiful way. And so we, we know that the, the tools to, to do that are prayer in the sacraments, but we can't, we can't leave, them, leave them out just like a duty that we have to pray every day, that we have to I don't know, come to confession to the Eucharist every day or, every, or often. Uh, it's not, as we said other times, prayer, like eternal life, it's not, it's not only for moments and places aside, it's an attitude of life. So prayer should be like the air to, to breathe, to use another comparison. And so we, we are really called to, to live with the Lord night and day. Like the, the cloistered monks, we are not cloistered monks. Uh, the Lord knows, the Lord knows that we have families, we have work, we have many things. But we are called to live the same, to be with him always. Why? Because we, we need a, a big passion in our, in our hearts. And that passion can be, uh, can fulfill our heart, only it's for the Lord. Uh, nothing else, not even our family, even though we, we love our families for, for sure. We can love our job, we can have friends and everything. But what can really take over our hearts is, the, is our passion for the Lord, for his kingdom. And so it's, it's much more than any relationship, but it's similar too. When we, are, when we really love someone, uh, you, can, you can tell about your, your, your spouses or your, your children, your grandchildren, your parents, uh, your uh, friends too, good friends. You uh, think of them spontaneously because you love them, in, especially in moments when it's more important you, you, you constantly think of, about them, you care for them, you, you are worried for them. It's something spontaneous that you have in your, in your minds, in your hearts, and, and you talk about them with your friends, with, your, with others. Uh, why? Because you, you love them. And, uh, or maybe some other uh, thing, some other hobby, but I think with people, it, it's very different. And so with the Lord, we are called to, to live something similar, even much more. And again, the saints, the mystics show us how much it's possible to love the Lord, uh, up, to, up to the identification with them, like, like I don't know, St. Francis and other saints who even had the, stigma, the stigmata because they identify themselves so, so deeply with, with Jesus. And so that's the, the, really the, 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 the main care we, we need to well for our, our uh, thoughts, our feelings, where are they? We can ask ourselves tonight, especially with the whole verse 45, which is quite challenging too, when Jesus says, good people draw what is good from the store of goodness in their hearts. Bad people draw what is bad from the store of badness. For the words of the mouth flow out of what fills the heart. I don't know if I, I find this verse uh, more and more true when I look at myself, so when I look at, at others. Uh, yeah, what we have inside, it comes out in a way or another, in everything. <laughs> how, and how we walk, how we dress, how, and, and not only that, how we, how we talk, especially Jesus, yes, yes, so he talks about words, 
which are the like the result of what we think of what we are worried about our feelings our thoughts so uh, prayer is about that eternal life is about that because if we are constantly i don't know uh, worried or constantly uh, sad uh, that is not eternal life it is, it is eternal hell on the contrary but that will will come out as well in our in our words on the contrary if we are constantly uh, happy if we constantly feel loved by by god by uh, by others too that will come out too uh, and, and eternal life will start now so this is the invitation that jesus does to us tonight to really see what we have inside we also find found this quote from saint augustine in order to discover the character of people you have only to observe what they love because it's we will talk about what we, we love what we are interested in what we are passionate about that is from this quote is from saint augustine uh, yeah, I remember, I remember, for example, when I was studying in Rome, I studied two years of theology in Rome, and uh, most of the professors are priests, some nuns, some lay people, but most of the professors are priests. And so I, I, I can't judge anybody, but uh, I don't know, as a young seminarian, as I was in that time, I, I was attracted by, by those priests and professors who really transmitted to me um, a deep faith. And I remember I had a professor of eschatology, so about eternal life, about um, heaven, hell, and purgatory, uh, who was very uh, passionate about it, who really cared for the salvation of everybody, and he tried to transmit to us the uh, zeal. And, um, and he was very also pastoral, he really cared for his students. Uh, but I remember other professors who were super learned, they knew all the, I don't know, all the uh, Greek language, uh, Hebrew language, and all the theology. Uh, but I don't know, they spoke in a very difficult language. I, as Italian, struggled to understand, to understand them. I don't know the poor foreigners who were there, how they could understand those professors. And my impression was that they wanted to show off how learned, learned they were. Um, but the, that was their passion, really, the, the books and the, I don't know, the Greek words, the Hebrew words. I mean, it's good to know all these things. I, I, don't get me wrong, but it can be the, the center of, of your, can be really the, the only passion of your, of your life, because that is what we will transmit to others. And, and yeah, for example, these professors didn't really, I, my impression is, is that they didn't really care for us, otherwise they would have used a, a simpler language for the for, for an especially. But anyway, it's an example. So we, we need, if, if God is not the first in our hearts, in our minds, in our, uh, in our, in our words, uh, we have to ask ourselves what is first, what goes first in a sincere way. And we can ask tonight the Lord to help us to, to transform our hearts and to uh, set them in a fire for, for Him. And so I found another quote, which is not from a saint, but from a, a very good English writer, Aldous Huxley. Is the one who said, uh, we can only love what we know. So if we, and then he continues, we can never know completely what we do not love. Love is a mode of knowledge. Yeah, but it, I stopped only with the first very simple quote. We can only love what we know. So if we don't, Feel that we love the Lord enough, maybe it's because we don't know Him enough. And so that's why it's so important to make time and space to the Lord 
physically, like in places in, in times and so on, every day, but especially in our hearts. So if, again, if we have other items, other things we are like dedicated to, maybe too much, it's normal that our love for the Lord want to be so strong, so, so passionate, so we can ask ourselves about it. And, uh, and, and then yeah, all those such things was so if we if we start discovering the, the beauty of our faith, uh, we will want want to know more and so it's a, it's a process of, of knowledge uh, by by now. Okay, so the, the last verses of this passage, the verses, 46 to 49, saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and acts on them, I will show you what such a person is like. Such a person is like the man who, when he built a house, dug and dug deep and laid the foundations on rock. When the river was in flood, it bore down on that house, but could not shake it. It was well built. But someone who listens and does nothing is like the man who built a house on, on soil with no foundations. As soon as the river bore down on it, it collapsed. And what a ruin that house became. So these words are very challenging too. And they're also interesting because Jesus doesn't talk about foundations, simply you like prayer, no? We know that prayer is the basis of everything. Prayer is the basis of, of everything and, and we need it and everything. But Jesus here actually says that the wise man, the one, the one who builds his house on the rock is the one who listens and who act upon the words of God. So it's not only a matter of, of saying words, as Jesus says very clearly, uh, Lord, Lord, it's not enough to say that. And again, prayer is not only a matter of duty or finding some time here and there for that. It's an attitude of life. And it's a, it's a matter of, of uh, practicing what the Lord tells us. So that is when our prayer is complete, not only when, when we pray apart, in, again, in, in moments apart, but when we put into practice during the day what the Lord uh, tells us. And uh, again, the, the cloistered monks, even then, even they uh, work the whole day, they have some times of also of relationships between, between them among themselves uh, to test if their prayer is authentic. And so how much more we, we are uh, going to, to see, to verify if our prayer is, is true in all our relationships, in all our uh, duties. So if we have many things to do, if we have many problems to do, so to solve, uh, that is not what is going to separate us from God. What is going to separate us from God is if, if, if we are not doing what God is asking from us. So if we are doing God's will in each moment, if we try to be united to him in our hearts with everything we do, uh, we are really living eternal life because eternal life will be uh, about doing his will 
all the time. We want to be rebellious anymore. So we can start doing that here and find finally peace uh, here on Earth as well. So we can ask ourselves what, about what we are doing. Jesus says that the man who listens to these words and do nothing, uh, his house will collapse. So we can also know many things about our faith, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, do nothing or even do contradictory things to, to our faith. And so our house then will definitely collapse. So the final result uh, of our lives, of our lives will depend on what we cultivate every day. So eternal life will simply be a continuation of what we are already doing here. I, I, I want to say sorry for always remembering funerals, but I remember, I remember other funeral, but that was when it was still in Russia. Uh, once there was a there was a an elderly lady. Uh, yeah, his fun her funeral was a bit sad because nobody said anything, any eulogy, anything. And uh, even, even her children or grandchildren didn't really love, love her, they, they told me later, because she was a very difficult woman, very, yeah, very lost in, her, in herself, and, and she didn't manage to build up any good relationship with anybody, basically. Uh, and so yeah, the relatives like, buried her just out of duty, but uh, yeah, it was a very cold funeral, not only because of the weather, but because of everything. So it was it was quite sad, actually. It was quite sad to see our life ending like that. Uh, but it's, it's the reality. We build up our life day by day. And so the outcome, uh, we can see the outcome already, already now, at the end of our life. So in heaven, or yeah, the church didn't change the doctrine about heaven, purgatory, and hell, because uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's God's gift, but it's also a collaboration uh, day by day. So we can ask the Lord to help us tonight to build, to build this, this house which won't uh, collapse and to teach us to, to pray, to live uh, eternal life at every moment. So, and then I will give you the, the questions anyway. The main questions are how do I cultivate and develop eternal life in me? How is my practice of prayer and the sacraments? The second question what mainly occupies my thoughts, feelings, and words? And the third question, what, which things are contributing to build, up, to build up my final destiny of glory in heaven? Which ones are compromising? So now it's then, so as usual, we can pray until 8.30, and then we can, we can share together.